welcome back everyone to chapter three. Here we're back in section one, kind of where we should have started, I guess, uh, or where you would expect to start. Uh, and this is called Limits, the Numerical and Graphical Viewpoints. And this is part A, we actually have two parts because this is a bit of a long section, a lot of pieces that we need to talk about. And the first thing that I want to tackle is why do we want to study limits, right? So this is the topic limits. And the claim is, I kind of went over this back here in section number four, is that the first big topic of calculus is slope at a point. And we found that in 4.1, our example, that our formula for slope at a point doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't work. So I need a new formula, a new way to calculate out slope at a point. And the claim is that limits will help. And so let me try to convince you of that uh, with a graph here, right? So this is uh, our graph from 4.1, x squared. And I wanted to know what was the slope at the point, 1, 1. So I have a nice dot here. You can see 1, 1 is labeled on my graph. And the claim is that the slope at this point actually does make sense. And in order to figure out what it should be, I need to get very, very close to that point. I need to zoom in to x equals 1. And when I start to zoom in, you can see even now, only three clicks or so, uh, even now that this looks pretty much like a straight line. It's pretty remarkable, right? That this looks like a straight line. So as I start to zoom in to x equals 1, get really, really close to it, you can see that this starts to look like a straight line. And if I asked you, what is the slope of this straight line? Well, let's kind of look. I have a nice grid here, and these grids have, you know, uh, are supposed to be equal uh, in length. And you can see that if I go over 1, I go up 2. Over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, just about. So you could think that the slope would be right around 2. And of course, as you zoom in even further, this becomes more and more evident. And in fact, I've gone ahead, because I, uh, I know some calculus, right? And I went ahead and I graphed this line. Where did this line come from? Well, that's going to be the topic of uh, chapters three and four. Um, but this is going to be, we're going to be able to figure out this line here later in the section. But notice what happens when I click on this. Watch. Okay, you can see kind of this black straight line, 2x minus 1, kind of perfectly covers up our curve, right? And the most important thing is that this line has a slope of 2, right? 2x minus 1. That's a slope of 2. So you would think that at this point right here, hopefully I have convinced you that the slope should be 2. And yet, our formula did not give that to us. So I need to figure out a better way to get slope at a point, right? And that's going to be where limits come in. All right, let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. In fact, I'll show you the line, what it looks like. You can see it kind of just barely skims at this point. Okay, so let's get back to our notes then. Uh, and hopefully I've convinced you that we need something more, that we need to talk about limits. Uh, and so limits are essentially getting really, really close uh, to some x value, you know, what happens. So, not super technical definition. We should think the limit of f of x as x approaches a. So this is our limit. Oh no, I need to switch to a pen. There we go. So this is denoted limit as x approaches a of our function f of x. This is the value, and you should think about it as a y value on a graph, right? Usually f of x uh, denote y values. So think of it as a y value on a graph. So this is the value that f of x gets really close to. As x gets really close to a, but not equal to a. So let me kind of draw out maybe an interesting situation for us here. Why would we want to talk about limits? So here's my a, and I'm going to draw, again, an interesting function here, f of x. And let's see, at a, it kind of makes this jump, right? And so I can talk about the limit, right? And this is, again, as x gets very, very close to a, but not equal to a, what does f of x get really close to? And again, we should think of this as a y value on the graph. And so the claim is, as you get really, really close, as x gets very, very close to a, I'd like you to think about this as writing the function here, right? We're writing this function. And it seems like the function is getting very, very close to this y value here. So I'm going to denote this with maybe an L or something like that. It gets very, very close to that function. In fact, remember, we're not allowed x to be equal to a. It just gets very, very close to a. And so that's where you would get the L. So if I was to denote this using my uh, notation here, this would be the limit as x approaches a of our function f of x, and this would be equal to l. 
All right, one more technicality here is that this is technically a two-sided limit. Notice that when I drew these arrows, that when I was writing the function, I wrote from kind of both the left and the right. There's two red arrows here. Uh, it also really is helpful to have this notion about a one-sided limit. So that's what I'd like to bring up to you next. So this is as x approaches a, maybe just from the left, or from the right. In our first example up here, it was kind of boring, right? As you approach from the left or as you approach from the right, they approach the same thing. So let me kind of draw maybe a, a, another situation that can occur. And in fact, I'm getting kind of tired of using all these arbitrary values, A's and L's and stuff like this. Maybe you are too. Let's use some uh, concrete numbers. Let's use one, and I'm gonna do one, two, and three on my scale here. Okay, so let's imagine I have a different function. This is now what my function looks like here. So now you can see it kind of matters on how you approach, if you approach from the left or the right or what. So in order to denote that I'm approaching from the left, so again, x is going to be approaching 1, but I'm approaching from the left. So I'm going to use a negative sign up here in a superscript, right? So this kind of looks like 1 raised to the negative 1, negative, or something like this. Uh, but this is notation. This means that I'm approaching from the left. I'm still writing my function f of x, and if I did that, Remember, it's still not, you can't allow it to equal 1, but imagine as you're writing the function getting closer and closer to 1, it looks like the y value this function is approaching is y equals 1. We could also talk about from the right, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. So we're going to use the plus sign, right, in the superscript position. And then as x gets closer and closer to 1, but I'm writing from the right, right? I'm on f of x, and I'm to the right of 1. It seems like the y value, oops, I don't know what happened there. Full screen again, please. Ha, there we go. All right, so it seems like the function's getting really, really close to the value 3, the y value 3. So I have a little bit of a theorem here, right? So a special situation. Because uh, kind of if you think back to about the two-sided limit here, the claim is this two-sided limit wouldn't exist. So the two-sided limit, two limit exists if and only if the two one-sided limits exist. And this is a typo. I'll have this probably fixed in yours when you download it. Uh, but for the time of the video, I have a typo here. Uh, so the limits exist and are equal. So in you know kind of better notation we say that the two sided limit exists so maybe the limit as x approaches a of f of x exists and is equal to some value i don't know what it is i'll call it l this is only true if the left hand limit so as i approach a from the left this is equal to l and as i approach from the right on f of x, this is equal to l. So that is to say that the limit of this example over here, as I just approach 1, and notice now this is a two-sided limit, because I'm not specifying from the left or from the right, of my function f of x would equal, and typically denote this d and e, which means does not exist because the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit have to equal each other, right? So that's what this was saying here, that the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit have to approach the same value. They have to approach the same value. In this case, they don't, and therefore, the two-sided limit does not exist. Okay, let's move on to something a little bit more concrete. Let's do some examples here. So one kind of thing that comes up in this section, ah, oh, again, there we go. One kind of thing that comes up in this section are, are problems like this, where we have a function given to us. In this case, we know its equation, sine of x over x. And I'd like to evaluate uh, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. And so kind of if you just plugged in 0, uh, you could see that technically you'd be dividing by 0 here. 
right? So you'd have sine of zero divided by zero, and that's undefined. So even if you plug it into our calculator or something like this, it gives you an error message. So in fact, let me do that really quick. I think that's a worthwhile uh, time investment on y equals, and I'm going to do sine of x divided by x. And I will hit graph. Of course, mine's all zoomed out weird. Let me do second and table. Oops, I guess it didn't get there already. And so you can see at zero, it gives us an error, right? It has no idea what's going on here, error, right? Because I'm dividing by zero, so that's a problem. So same thing, but the claim is, so right at zero, we don't know what's going on. But as you get very, very close to zero, the function makes perfect sense. So the question is, does this limit exist? And so you can see that the values that I've chosen here, 0.5, 0.1, 0 0.01, they're getting closer and closer to zero. This would be like if we're approaching from the right, right? These are all bigger than zero. Likewise, negative 0.5, negative 0.1, negative 0.01, these are all smaller than zero. So this is like if you're approaching from the left. And when you're doing these things, well, again, it doesn't really make sense, the function at zero, but you can talk about what happens as you get very, very close to zero. And so what happens as you get very, very close to zero, it looks like these values are getting closer and closer to one, right? This is actually very, very close to one. Likewise, on the right-hand side, as you get closer and closer to zero, these values, they're actually identical. They get very, very close to one. So I would guess here, and really with tables, all you can do is guess, is that the limit as x approaches zero of f of x, they seem to agree from the left and from the right, and they both seem to agree on one, okay? All right, so that's how we can use tables to try to evaluate out limits. Let's do another one with a graph. So here's an interesting graph, and I'd like to, and now this is called g of x, I guess, g of x, and I'd like to know what happens as I approach two from the left what happens if I approach two from the right? What about the two-sided limit? And then what about the two-sided limit when I approach three? Interesting. All right, so what you're typically doing for these, you imagine you're writing the function, I'm getting closer and closer to two from the left. And as I'm getting closer and closer to two from the left, it looks like this value is getting closer and closer to one, right? That's the y value, that's what we're approaching. Okay, from the other direction, if I'm bigger than two, Writing the function, getting closer and closer to four in this case. Now, because the limit as I approach from the left and the limit as I approach from the right are not equal to one another, right? They need to be the same value. Therefore, the two-sided limit does not exist. So eh, maybe I'll use black here if I can. Does not exist. And that's using that theorem uh, 1.3 uh, from the last page. And then finally, what about the two-sided limit uh, as I approach, I'll use blue maybe, uh, as I approach three now for g of x. So if I approach three, remember kind of think about it from the left and from the right. Well, I seem to be getting very, very close to this y value right here. As I approach from the left or from the right, it seems like they agree I'm getting closer and closer to the y value two. So in this case, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit do agree. They're getting closer and closer to two. Okay. So that's how we can do this with some graphs, right? Interpret these things with graphs. Finally, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself with this example, but I just can't wait. Uh, this is a typical kind of piecewise defined function. So it's broken up into three scenarios. One where the function's defined if x is less than one. One way, uh, you know, if x is equal to one, and then again, if x is greater than 1. So there's kind of three different scenarios sort of deal. And this is our function h of x. So one thing that you can do, the claim is graphs like this thing up here come from piecewise defined functions, right? They kind of act differently uh, depending on, in this case, if it's less than 2, equal to 2, or greater than 2. So right, here's the less than 2 part, equal to 2, greater than 2. So one thing that you could do is graph this but we're gonna get good at doing these without graphing them, actually just by looking at them. So the first thing, let's try this out a little bit. If I'm less than one, if I'm to the left of one, 
right? If I'm to the left of one, that means I'm less than one. So really, I'm in this first scenario right here, right? So I'm getting very, very close to one, but I'm less than one, right? I'm to the left of it, right? And so if that was the case, if I'm just very interested in this 3x squared, as x gets very, very close to 1, but just a little bit less. I mean, imagine if it's 0.999. Let me pull out my calculator here. Uh, and let's do 3 times 0.999 squared. We want to know what is this getting really, really close to? 2.994. Okay, let's do one more experiment and then we'll go ahead and take our guess. Instead of uh, 0.999, let's do 0.9999999. <laughs> Something like this squared. Okay, so this is plugging in values very, very close to 1, but just a little bit less than that. Now this is 2.999994. So I think that this is getting very, very close to 3. That kind of makes sense. How about if I approach from the right? Then I'm kind of in this third scenario right here, right? If I'm to the right of one, that means I'm bigger than one, right? Imagine that we have a number line really quick. Here's one. If I'm approaching from the right, I'm bigger than one. And before, right when I was approaching from the left, I was smaller than one. All right, so as I approach from the right, as I'm bigger than one, I'm again in this third case right here. And so let's kind of imagine this case again. I'm very, very close to 1, but I'm a little bit bigger than 1. So what if I did 5 minus, and I have to do something really, really close to 1, but just a little bit bigger. So 0 0.000001. Well, this is very, very close to 4. It's just a little bit off. So I think this limit's going to be equal to 4. Essentially, what you're doing is that you're plugging in 1 here, right? or you're plugging in 1 here, right? 3x squared, if you just you plugged in x equals 1, that would be 3. And likewise, 5 minus 1 is indeed 4. OK, how about now the two-sided limit as you approach 1? Well, this is, again, does not exist because the two, two one-sided limits did not equal each other, right? 1 was 3, 1 was 4. They don't agree, so this does not exist. How about as you approach negative 1, right? So if you approach negative 1, well, negative 1 certainly less than 1. So I'm going to be in this uh, first case scenario again. Let me kind of maybe do this in red. So I'm in this first case scenario here. Less than 1 is certainly negative 1. So you have to be careful with this notation, right? With a superscript, this means approaching 1 from the left, versus if I just said x approaching negative 1. So in that case, if I get something very, very close to negative 1, uh, let me pull out my calculator again. So 3 times something very, very close to negative 1. So it's going to do negative 0.999999, a bunch of 9s uh, squared. And this gets very, very close to, hmm, it seems pretty close to 3. That's okay. Uh, a little bit to the right of negative 1, right? A little bit bigger than negative 1. How about if I did a little bit smaller than negative 1? Does it approach the same thing? So negative 1.0. Oops, not two points. Huh. Zero, 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 one. Uh, and we need to square that. Does it also get very close to three? It does. So in both cases, they're very, very close to three. So I'm going to say this would be, oops, erase. This is getting very, very close to three. And in fact, if you plugged in negative one into this function right here, you would get three times negative one squared, which happens to be three. So next time, we'll see that you can actually just plug a lot of these things in that that does work. All right, so that is where I want to stop uh, for our first video, part A here in 3.1. Go ahead and take a break, uh, and I'll see you in class, and then next time we'll do part B. All right, see you then.